Hey and welcome again to Kart Corner, the place where we discuss various serious matters such as mediocre kart racers and how they hold up more than 20 years after their release date. This week as you can see we're gonna be talking about Muppet Race Mania, which I kept mispronouncing as Muppets Race Mania. I didn't really know anything about this game before playing it, again, it was recommended to me many times before, but I've never watched gameplay or anything that could spoil how the game was. Another thing that I should probably mention is that I never watched the Muppets before. I know, sacrilege. As a kid I'm pretty sure I thought the Muppets and Sesame Street were the same thing, so anything with the Muppets for my young mind was Sesame Street and I didn't like Sesame Street so never in my life I cared to look it up because of an early judgement I made as a kid. Everyone knows those build your character and the things you like and dislike and giving a second chance is usually worthless, but here I am, carrying the weight of the choices 5 year old me made more than 20 years ago. <laughs> Don't worry everyone, I'll survive. The first time I started this game, I was really happy to see that this was made by Traveler's Tales, a British game dev company who has appeared on this channel before and probably will show up again at some point. One of my favorite kart racers of all time, as you might know, is Toy Story Racer, a game that was also developed by the same company. This one, however, came out a year earlier and was made for a completely different publisher, Midway Games. Isn't it crazy how every game developer used to be connected to so many different publishers, which was also used to be connected to so many other different game developers that also worked for different publishers? <sighs> but anyway, we start the game with an extremely chaotic menu screen where it won't stop spinning. Muppets run around it, collecting stuff and throwing bombs at each other while an almost inedible song plays in the background because of the sound of the World War II soldiers dying in the field is way too loud. Here you have some options like meet the Muppets, very cool idea where you can get to know the Muppets and try them out to see how they play and see a tiny bit of their personality. First you get Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, the Great Gonzo, Fozzie Bear and... Uh, this is already my favorite character and the only one I ever want to play as. However, uh, there is a total of 25 characters and 25 vehicles in the game which you can't change whenever you're gonna start the race. Safe to say, there are a lot of unlockables in this game. Here's a problem. I was really confused as to how I was supposed to unlock them. I played races and tournaments and didn't unlock a single car or character in the game. But I mean, come on, look. You get to the main menu and here you can select Meet the Muppets, which only lets you test the characters, Game Status, which lets you check the progress in the game, Select Course, which lets you pick the race you wanna play, and Tournament, which it's exactly that. So how do you play the campaign in this game? Well, you must go to select course and then select the race you want to play, but instead of starting the game, you have to go down to game menu and from there select the adventure mode. And from there, you can roam around freely on the map with a timer, something like Tony Hawk, but you can only do one objective per time. It is convoluted for no reason, but fine. Here you have some objectives like collect all stars, find every collectible, find every piece of food, beat a boss in a race, find the secret tape. It is basically Tony Hawk's racing game. I won't tell you I didn't have fun with these. It can definitely get boring pretty quickly, especially because you can't do more than one objective at once. Whenever you finish something, your time is over and you have to start all over again. Of course, the racing though. Probably the most important aspect of a racing game, in my opinion, is actually pretty good. Of course though, like I said, I'm a big fan of Toy Story Racer and this one plays basically the same. When you start a race, you get a quick minigame where you have to press random buttons in the order they show, and the more you do, the bigger the boost you start with. Cars feel very different from each other. Weirdly enough, I think the most responsive one is Bubbler, which is a car with three wheels that controls like a car with three wheels. It is uh, weirdly satisfying. You have your basic Mario Kart power-ups and you can hold two of them at once. I bet you never seen that one before. What you can also do is collect food throughout the track to fill your boost meter, which, if fully filled, can either be used as a super boost, which is like the bullet bill from Mario Kart, or you can use your character's special power, which is usually just slowing down everyone so you can get past them. 
Not only that, but you can also jump in this game, which can be used to damage enemies and I found it to be especially useful during the battle game mode. Just like every Mario Kart clone out there, of course, this one also has a battle mode where you can join your friends to beat each other to death. Uh, uh, as Muppets, that is. I actually thought that they would use the racetracks as levels for the battle mode, as there are some shortcuts that are more like... Uh, how do you say it? Uh, long cuts. Many times playing the races I jumped into something that looked like a shortcut just for me to either lose positions because the path was actually longer than the normal track, or the game simply sent me into the wrong way. I was really confused about this at first, but then I noticed that these are actually for the adventure mode, which... Uh, makes absolutely no sense. And I hate that it's done like this. Why wouldn't you at least close this off for the races? It makes so the track end up looking confusing instead of being straightforward. You also have a different mode, which is called Stunt. It's basically a time trial against no one as there are no times to beat. But you can also play the adventure mode, which then has some objectives for you to do in a more convoluted track with a fixed camera perspective. I didn't find it very fun to be completely honest, it's basically the same as the other tracks but they expect you to do some platforming, which, in my opinion, could possibly work in a different card game but not this one. The controls are definitely not fit for platforming and I think they just thought the game needed something else and shoved this into the game for content's sake. The music in this one I wish I could tell you more about but what I can't say is that I find it pretty fitting for the game. I don't know what Muppets music sounds like but what I found is that apparently the title screen song is also in a white CP made in 2020 where Buzz Lightyear catches COVID-19. Yeah, I have no idea. The music seems to be no because of that video, but I'll let you hear some of my favorites here. Also, I cannot help myself and not draw some comparisons between this and the music in Toy Story Racer, which of course it's made by the same company. I love the Swamp track by the way. The game is also filled with scenes from the Muppets movies, which again I've never watched and actually I don't think I can show it to you here. After taking a look at some of these, I feel like it's my duty to get into the Muppets. Not only that, but there's also some chit chat from two characters before and after a race, which is either some of the funniest things I've ever heard. This is the scariest part of this race. The graveyard? No, the drivers. Oh! <laughs> or some of the worst. You're a real winner. You're being awfully nice. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant whiner. Oh! <laughs> and at last we have the graphics and I'll do the thing again where I draw comparisons because there's a lot of things that my brain instantly recognize from the other game. The graphics themselves are fine. I think the game looks on par with other PS1 card games with the only big downside I can think of being the very low render distance and how the level of details 3 feet in front of you looks like a smudge of paint instead of whatever they wanted it to be. It can be kind of annoying seeing everything pop up in front of you all the time, which is something that was fixed for the other game. And also, there are some buttons that are used in Toy Story Racer and now I wonder if they have been using some assets in games before this one too. In conclusion, I believe this one is very much worth playing. It's a fun kart racer that if you don't plan on going for 100% and unlocking everything in the game, can very much keep you playing for hours and hours, especially if you have a friend to bring with you. It does have its downsides, like the level design is clearly janky and the world popping in right in front of you but the gameplay is really where it's at. I believe this one is just one of those good games that people don't really care about because it looks like it's just gonna be a cash grab, but Traveler's Tales did not let us down on this one. And <laughs> to be fair, 
have they ever? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm sorry about the delay between the last video and this one, but I'm finally getting back on track with the videos. So thank you so much for sticking to the end. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.